Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're gonna talk about putting on posterior bite bumps. Um, how do we do that? Why do we do that? And what's the easiest way to do that? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So posterior bite bumps are basically little globs of bumps, of glue, of composite, that you put on back teeth temporarily in orthodontic cases to help keep patients from breaking brackets. Um, and or, like in this situation here, see how number seven and 10 or the upper twos are in crossbite? Um, they won't likely jump forward as easily once you get brackets on them and engage them because they're tucked behind the lower laterals. So if you raise the bite a tiny bit like this, um, then they're much like more likely you know, because even though we're in a resting position, mostly during the day, at nighttime, often we're like this, right? So that's like, and when we're stressed, we're like this. So that's like half your day that they won't be able to move if you're locked in like that. So it just makes things move quicker and easier. Now, remember, you don't want to necessarily put posterior bite bumps on all your patients, because if you leave them on too long, the tooth teeth that you put them on actually can intrude over time. And the teeth up so we don't want to do that, right? So we only want them on as short as possible, and we want to make sure we take them off. The reason why I don't like them when they're done clear or white or tooth colored is that you forget they're on. They kind of quasi start to wear down. They look just like a lumpy filling, and you forget, right? And then later, at the end of treatment, the patient's like, aren't you going to take this off? And now those teeth are intruded. And now you've got to spend another four months in braces trying to upright them. So that's why I like to color them. So I'm going to show you how I do it. There are a couple different ways to do it. So let's pretend like we're putting bite bumps on this patient. We're only gonna leave them on as short as possible, maybe only one or two months, and we're gonna color them so we know to remember to take them off. Um, so this is how I do it. I go ahead, I make my two little blobs of glue, express it out, one. Or you can just do one big one and split it in half, either way, two. Okay, this is my little trick. I take a piece of articulating paper. I like the blue side, not the red side, because red side looks like blood, blue side looks like blue. And I put a, just a drop of primer on the articulating paper with the micro brush and I mix it around and see how my micro brush is now blue. It's really easy. And then I use that to mix the composite. It's just a really subtle blue, okay? Mix it up. Mix it all around. Now here's the thing is I don't etch and prime the molar when I do this because I don't really care if it falls off. Matter of fact, I want it to fall off. It makes my life a heck of a lot easier if it does, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and roll it around, okay? You can even just dot it in here if you want. That's another way to do it when you roll it around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just put it with the micro brush on the tooth. It doesn't matter if you do top, bottom, whatever tooth is easier. Obviously, if it's on a mixed dentition case, I would prefer to do it on a baby tooth than a permanent tooth, because that way it can fall off and I don't have to worry about it. But usually I'll do it on premolars or molars. You need to make sure it does not um, you need to make sure it does not go in between the contacts or anything. You also want to put it where they're biting. So it's a good idea to like have the patient tap, 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 grind around. Make sure you find the spot where they're biting, you know, all extrusive movements and everything. So if possible, you're going to do that. And make sure you do it bilaterally because, oh goodness, of course, this patient's like biting all kind of random spots. But anyways, maybe I'll put it like right there. Okay, and then that's pretty much it. I just put it on. Sometimes I'll have them lightly tap down. Oopsies, let's not do that. It's a little different on a type of dot than on a real patient. And then I just go ahead and light char. And that's that. And of course, there we go. And you're gonna have to do a lot of light curing because normally, of course, you're putting these on in layers, you know, so it'll stay on for a few months. And like I said, if not, you remember it's blue and you'll remember to take it off, okay? So we gotta do that bilaterally. So I have two of these here. I might as well do this correctly. Go ahead and do my other one. 
What happened to my articulating paper? Here we go. Lost it. So yeah, I don't do red because red looks like blood and patients freak out with that. Um, and that way I remember to take them off if they're blue. Just kind of turn it blue. It's a little messy. All righty. Now let's go ahead and light cure this sucker. I'm gonna pause this for a second while I finish light curing and then we'll show you. All right, we're done light curing. Let's see if this did the trick. And now you say, yes, it's probably a little bit overdone, which you're gonna find happens, which is okay. Um, honestly, they're probably gonna fall off anyways. If not, I'm gonna take them down, they're gonna wear them down. So this is okay, this is not something super crazy. This will definitely do the trick. And if it doesn't come off as soon as these jumps crossbite, I'm gonna go ahead and drill them off. Remember, they're blue, so they're really easy to notice that they're there. Um, you won't forget to take them off at the end. You'll make sure you get it all off too, you know, which patients appreciate. And that's the trick of bite turbos, posterior bite turbos. And if you want to do anterior bite turbos, that's okay too. That's for something different. I tend to do anterior bite turbos either on the backs of the canines or the backs of the front teeth. Um, you can buy actually a mold for those, which makes them a really nice shape. Um, if you want to, or you can just do the style that I just did. Of course, you want to check your bite first. That is meant for deep bites where you want to open the bite and level the curve of speed with elastics, like um, triangle elastics or posterior box elastics. And you can just put it right back here if you have occlusion. Again, as always, check your occlusion. That's an alternative to a fixed bite plate, which I actually like better. Those are palate supported. Um, I think it's healthier. My concern always doing the anterior bite turbos is that it can cause some frematis, um, so widening of the PDLs. You definitely want to pick your patients wisely because you don't want to pick somebody with short roots who's already maybe had some trauma to the front teeth, but is definitely an option. Um, but the posterior bite bumps, like I said, are short term to clear anterior crossbite or posterior crossbite to lift the occlusion um, and or to deal to reduce the likelihood that you're breaking lower brackets during treatment. But Try not to keep them on any more than two months, which is why we're coloring them blue. And by the way, if you don't have articulating paper, which I think you probably do, another way you can do this is with one of those denture um, pokey sticks. You know, those ones, if you, if you see profs patients, you use those little like blue sticks to, to tap a denture sore spot. You can use that as well. That works just as well as the articulating trip. All right, hope that helped. Thanks so much.